Good day once again. My name is Graphics. Today we'll be looking at um, loop and mesh analysis. Now we know very well that a mesh is a loop with no other loop inside. What I mean is this. Now, if I have all this, this is a loop. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. If I'm considering everything here, it's called a loop. Now, but if I take each section, it's called a mesh. Right? Like, for instance, now, if I consider, if I consider loop, if I consider mesh, a, B, G, H, A. I consider this circuit here, this part here, this close part. This is a mesh. That's why I say a mesh is a loop with no other loops inside. So this is a mesh. You can also call it a loop. Right, so when but when you don't have any other loop inside, like this now has more than three loops here inside of it, so you call it a mesh or you call it a loop. Now, but I can consider each and every one of them. I can go to the next one again. This is another mesh that is B C F G B. So from this beginning back to this beginning is called the mesh. Similarly to the other part also C D E F C the other mesh another mesh. So in this case you can call them a loop too. Right? So like I will always say again that a, a mesh is also a closed part in a circuit with no other part inside. So a closed part in a circuit with no other part inside. This is a circuit. But these have other parts inside, right? And these have other loop inside. Due to the fact that it has other loop inside, it is called what? A loop. But it can never be called a mesh. Right? But this now has no other part inside. There's no any other part inside. So this is called a mesh but and also it can be called a loop also. This can be called a loop but cannot be called a mesh. Now we're looking at catch off current law and catch off voltage law now catch off current law states that the algebraic sum of all the current entering the node is equals to the current leaving the node right so for instance a node is a point where two or more current meets so if I have a node this way, let me call this to be my node A, right? If a current is coming in, let's call that current I1. And another current is leaving, let's call this current I2. Let's put another one coming in again, let's call this I3. Another one coming in. Let's call this I4. Right? So the catch of current law is telling us that the total current that's entering this node. What are the total current entering this node? I1 is entering and I4 is entering. So it will be I1 plus what? I4 because both of them are entering. Is equals to the current leaving. So I2 is leaving. So it will be I2 plus what? I2 plus what? Because I2 is leaving. So I2 is the only current leaving. So it will be I1 plus what? I2 leaving. Then um, also I3 is also entering here. So it will be I1, I3, I4, they are all entering. So you add all the current entering equals to what? The current leaving. But in this case, here, it's I2 that is leaving. But if I now add another current here, I now put another current here. Let me call it I5 that is leaving. Let's say I5, right? So I'm going to add I5 here. So this is what 
catch up current law is telling us that the current that is entering the node is equal to what the current leaving node. So this is what current entering. Right? Why this is what? Current leaving. So current entering is equal to what? Current leaving. The sum of current entering is equal to the sum of what? Current leaving. That is what KCL is telling us about. Now, if you look at this example, we have two nodes here. Node A and node B. And current are coming in and current are leaving. Now, what you do here is you say consider consider node what node a at node a we know that the total current entering is equal to what the total current leaving so i1 and i2 is entering this node so it will be i1 plus what i2 now you see that i3 is leaving and is equal to what i3 now what is my i1 my i1 let me see my i1 is what 2 amperes my i2 is what 3 amperes right so it will be that i1 plus i2 that is 2 plus 3 is equal to what i3 so my i3 is equal to what 5 amperes so the i3 moving this direction is what 5 amperes now similarly if i consider if i consider node b which is this node here now if you look at i3 is entering so it will be i3 i4 is entering plus i4 then i5 is leaving so it equals to what i5 so you add all the current entering equals to what addition of all the current leaving so what is i3 we know my i4 is equals to let me see one ampere my i5 is equals to what two ampere right so if i want to do or let me see i'm looking for my i5 i5 is unknown i5 is unknown right so it will be i3 which we've already got into the word five plus i4 which is coming in so i3 is coming in i4 is what also coming in which is one is equals to what um i5 which is unknown so that means my i5 is equal to what six ampere my i5 is what six ampere so that's how you analyze uh one of the ways you analyze catch of current law all good so the next thing we're trying to look at look at will be our what kvl the kvl catch of voltage law is giving us what the KVL catch off voltage law is giving us this and it says that the algebraic sum of all current all the voltage in a loop in a closed loop or a closed circuit is said to be what zero now what it means is that what um, if I have a loop or a mesh this way now this is a loop or you call it a mesh is a mesh that there is no I have explained earlier there is no other loop inside of it now we want to consider this one thing you need to know is that when current passes through a resistor right there's always a voltage drop to so the V voltage will be what negative and when current passes a resistor in the direction of the current so when you pass so we're having a, a voltage drop now but if this is a positive terminal and this is a negative terminal because as you are moving this is positive the longer side and this is negative the shorter side of the terminal here now this would be the positive and this would be what negative so if this is positive and this is negative and voltage current passes through the the resistor 
there will be a negative voltage or there will be a voltage drop. But if similar case happens, that I have this this way, and it is going this positive negative, and it's going in a reverse direction, our voltage is what positive. When it's going back in the reverse direction, the voltage is what positive. Mm -hmm. Similarly, if you have a source, either a current source or a voltage source and um we know current move from a lower potential to a higher potential but if the current move from a higher potential which is positive to a higher potential to a lower potential which is what negative the voltage there will be what negative but if the current moves from what from lower potential to higher potential, the voltage will be what? Positive. That is what I want you to understand. So in this case here, now let's see. Let's apply our KV or catch off voltage law here. If I'm moving in this direction in a clockwise manner like this, let me start from here. So I'm moving from a negative to a positive terminal. I'm moving from a lower potential to put a, um, to a higher potential. So our voltage is what? Positive. So I'll see the Vs, that is the voltage supply, which is Vx. Then, if I now move here, this is when current passes through a resistor, there's a voltage drop, right? So it will be minus V1, because this is arrow, this is resistor 1, so the voltage drop 1. If you have gone through the videos earlier, you get to understand what I mean. Then to the next one will be minus what? V2 minus what v3 everything equals to what zero right so we are moving from higher potential lower higher lower and so on and so forth so but recall v is equals to what i arrow and that is our what home slow so the vs here is giving us what 27 minus we have what is v v is giving us what i r1 because v is i is, is a single loop so the current is just a single current that's slowing through this loop minus i r2 minus i r3 equals to zero because v is i arrow so since it's v1 is i arrow one v2 i arrow two v3 but when it passes through a resistor there's always a voltage drop now 27 minus what is arrow one arrow one is two so we're having two i one or two i minus arrow two is what three i'll call it three i one so when I call this to be I1 also, we use I1 throughout since the loop is just 1, right? So minus 3 is what? 4 ohms, and that will give us what? 4 I1 equals to 0. So we're having 27. If you subtract all this, we'll be having, if you add all this, we'll be having minus 9 I1. And this will give me 0. So if 9 come here, we'll see 27 is equals to what 9i1 so i1 here will go to what to give us a uh, 27 27 over 9 and that'll give us what 3 ampere so we're having what i want to be equals to what 3 amperes how oh, good now that is not the case here that's not the only case here you can just go in a similar fashion if you don't want to move to this way you can say since current is moving from a lower potential to a higher potential to be 27 the voltage will be positive then current i is coming into this it will be i let me call it i1 traveling or i total to be i1 r1 so it will be negative since it's moving from positive to there's a voltage drop in each resistor so it will be I minus I1, arrow minus 2, I1, let me put this way, let me, so you get to understand better. 
So it will be, let me do it here. So I have 27 minus um, 2i1 because the resistance times the current give it the voltage. We have minus the i1 will see enter arrow 2 to be 3 i1 so minus 3 i1 right minus the same current will enter the resistance 3 so it will be the resistance times the current will give you the voltage minus 4 i1 so we have minus 4 i1 equals to 0 so if you add all this all together we'll be having 24 minus 27 minus 9i1 equals to 0 so 27 is equals to what 9i1 so i1 is equals to 27 over 9 so my i1 is equals to what 3 amperes so any of the two you choose you are on track so you need to understand that you can even go reverse process so let's assume that let's take this off now let's take this off now even though we go opposite direction, so we are coming in an anti-clockwise manner. Initially it was clockwise, now let's take anti-clockwise. So we are moving from positive to negative. And I say we are moving from positive, from positive to negative. Hmm? Moving, look at the arrow, moving from positive to negative, the voltage will be what negative. So we're having minus what? 27. And we're moving from negative to positive. So we are going opposite direction now. It will be plus 4i1, plus 4i1, right? The current is going in this direction now. Let me put it this way, i1, right? So i1 will enter here plus 4i1, plus if we enter here 3i2, 3i1, because the next one will be what? Plus 2i1 equals to 0. So from here I'll be having minus 27 plus 9i1 equals to 0. So 9i1 will not give me 27. i1 will not give me 27 over 9. So we'll be having our value to be i1 to be equal to what? 3 amperes. So this is how you can manipulate that aspect. Okay? So we already told you on how to calculate your voltage drop. So it's the same circuit I've been using right from day one. So you can easily calculate your voltage drop or your power in each resistance. Thank you very much for watching.